Where are you guys? I think it's been last one. Got it. Okay. Oh, a few more. Let's have a look. So here we go. Oh, yeah, Sue, Trudy. Excellent. Oh, I'm just going to check I'm coming out live. But we all have uh, little grey boxes. Right, let's have a look. Oh, where's my... Oh, yeah, no. I've got... Uh... Cool. Oh, all right, okay. Hey, hey, Dylan. Hey, Trudy. Oh, can't you hear me? <laughs> all right, we're just settling in. Um, those of you watching on Facebook, hopefully this is, I think it's coming out live. I can see it on my phone. Um, so uh, we'll just give it a couple of moments. I think there's a couple of other people that are waiting to join. Um, and uh, I'll do a little, I'm going to just change the view. I'll just do speak of you for a second. Let's just, do, 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 do. hang on a second. Okay. So let me just move this out of the way. All right. Welcome, everybody. Um, thank you for joining me live on Facebook. This isn't the best lighting. Let me see if I can hmm, bear with me. I'm going to just try to flick another light on. Bear with me. Oh, you right there, you. Okay, all right, hopefully that's a little bit better. Okay, welcome everybody, all oh, the dog wandering off across the screen. Welcome everybody, thank you for joining me this evening on Facebook. Um, hopefully this is a Zoom call which has been live streamed. So I think a little bit of a delay between um, the conversation we have on Zoom versus it being live streamed. But hopefully if somebody can just, oh, Yvonne's having trouble joining. Huh, Yvonne, I'm going to try and... If you're watching, copy. Yvonne, I'm just going to private message you this. So if you're watching, hopefully you'll pick this up. So I just need to find a message from you. Yvonne. Walker. Uh, no, that's not what I want. Um, let's have a look. Uh, 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 how do I? Well, my... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How do I? I'm just going to try and get Yvonne in the meeting. Hmm. Anybody ideas how you share the meeting with somebody individually? Any, anybody got any ideas? Oh, the one eyed board terrier. Okay. If she just clicks on the link, she should be able to go in it. Okay, all right. Or you can, um, no. Oh, hello. What's <laughs> going on? I'll say what's um, his info. Is it? Yeah. Let's try. Because hmm, I think because I'm, I'm live and streaming, I'm not sure I can share, but let me try. Invite. Try I'll tag her in the link on the page. Copy, invite. Okay, hang on. I think I might have done it. Hang on. Yeah, go on. Yeah, you can do that and then we'll try it both ways, Lou. There. I've sent her the link privately. Okay. Well, hopefully one of us will get you in, Yvonne, if you're watching. Okay. I'm going to... Um, hopefully she'll join us shortly. Okay. Welcome, everybody. Hopefully um, those of you can hear me at home. Uh, and this is uh, some of the, uh, my VIP members. Um from uh, several uh, places. So we've got representatives from New Zealand, Australia, Holland, and obviously around the UK. Some of the others I think might be trying to, I think Yvonne's coming, she's in Scotland. So a broad eclectic mix of people. So um, I just thought I would do this as an opportunity for anybody watching on Facebook to um, get an insight from people that are in the VIP groups um, about their experience of online training and um, we'll just have a little bit of a, a conflab about obedience. So. Let's just do a quick little, um, da, 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 da. Lou, you're going to put your camera on. You're going to be camera shy. <laughs> pressure, peer pressure, Lou. Everybody else has. Just saying. How shy is, every, just saying. Is, is everybody else in the bath? <laughs> oh, that'll get more views, Lou. We'll go viral. No, I'm not in the bath. We've got no hot water because we've got no boiler. 
So oh, excellent. I can put it on. Yeah, it's fine. I just didn't. I didn't know whether you were putting them on. Okay. There I am. All right. So, um, I think most people have been um on the VIP group. Maybe I think most of you from the beginning when it um first. I know um Jamie might have come a little bit later on, and possibly Dylan. I think most and Sue. Yeah. So um obviously the 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 VIP group or the online training you know what um was set up um with the option of joining as a VIP um and that was something that you know I'm going to be giving more details of next week um but people use it in various ways several several people so for example Rose I literally saw yesterday um Dylan I saw yesterday Lou I see regularly um and they use it as a as a supporting and I'm going to allow you to, them to give their insight into it However, other people like, for example, Sue, Jan, Trudy, Jamie, I don't see regularly, um, as in physically regularly. So it's a way in which I can still stay connected with them. So from, say, for example, Lou, Dylan, Rose, um, who see me regularly, why would you, why, what made you join the VIP group and, and what, 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 how do you use it and um, what would you say to people thinking about it? Whoever wants to go first. Uh, I can. Go on, um, so I probably see you the most regularly out of everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but for me, uh, I use it just for little bits in between of that. It's easy to just send a little snapshot of the things that we've been working on so that then I can progress things on. And actually, I found for me as well, personally, it keeps me so accountable recording my sessions. So even right. if I don't necessarily share all of them mm -hmm. I do have it and then I'm able to look back at it afterwards and yep. uh, and review them myself because mm -hmm. I'm always videoing them thinking oh I should video that and put that on the uh put that on the group yep. um but I, I've you know obviously I get the input on my dogs but just from watching the other people there's so much to learn yep. from watching the other people that's so applicable to to my dog or yep. to my handling or to my things so it's yep. really useful both getting the feedback on my own videos but also actually looking at other people's videos and seeing you know the feedback that they're getting and thinking oh I can use that thank you very yeah. much yeah 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 how about some, how about yourself Rose and Dylan you see me more regularly um yeah. I I need both mm -hmm. because I can coast along and then like yesterday you can kick me up the backside, but then I can go back in and like Lou puts a lot on. Yeah. Which is really useful to see. Cause I go, ah, yeah. Oh, so I yeah. see what the other people are doing who sometimes go on more than me. Cause I post periodically depending yeah, on. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but I can watch people. I can see yeah. what's happening. Yeah. I can see, yeah. I can try that. Yeah. If it doesn't work, I don't know how to tell anyone. Yeah. 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 Well, that's the beauty, isn't it? Because, the way in which the VIP groups work is there's you get can post as many videos as you like. So there's unlimited amount of videos. So when I first started um, thinking about how to do it, um, you know, th there is way, you know, people, some people limit the amount of content that you're allowed to post and you can have one dog, etc. I I really wanted to make it. And I think this is a byproduct. It's a real sense of community. And I wanted people to be able to, you know, they could post on any dog that they own. Um, they can get, feedback or um there is unlimited so if they want to post every day or power to them if they want to post you know once every six months same it's totally up to them i wanted to be as fluid as possible because i wanted to be really really proactive and help people in the way that best fits them so some people really like to that'll do you oh um post uh you know quite regularly it helps them and like lou said keeps them on track others like uh, don't hardly post um, any videos but very occasionally some people just use it to watch and get um, a little bit of motivation because obviously I've done other talks and lives as for the VIP groups um, on things like the mental game ring prep etc um, so it's it's just allows them to get a, you know makes it really really personalized um, how about yourself Dylan yeah a lot of what the others have said really yeah. um, I think not having a regular dog club to go to I think it's quite nice it sort of fills that space a bit yeah. Um, and I mean, I don't post a huge amount. But sometimes I do, and yeah. there's generally a lot of sort of positive feedback and all that yeah. sort of encouragement that sometimes you need. I think it's a good place to ask questions if you weren't sure. You know, not just yourself, but people are going through similar issues or yeah. similar bits of their training. You know, it's yeah, yeah it, it's it sort of stands in as a dog club for me. Yeah, you know? 
it's Absolutely. a nice, nice addition for that. And I think for, certainly for you, because you literally used to come to Dog Club every week. Yeah. And obviously when I moved out of London, it's an it's a substitute or for a version of, isn't it? So how about yeah. the others then? So um, Jamie, Sue, Jan, Trudy, how do you guys use it? And, and what's your take on it? Obviously Jan and Sue, you guys are a bazillion miles away, um, the other side of the world. Um, so thank you for joining first and foremost. So how do you guys use it? Sue? Um, well, I use it basically to teach me. Yeah. Um, and also, there's very few people here that do this type of training, this yeah. style of training. And if you do join a club, you'll never get it at a club. Right. Um, so like, I probably only know of one in New South Wales, at least, one person who can teach it. Yeah. So it's it's my training method, really. Yeah. Um, actually, here, you will be criticised for the style. You'll be right. criticised by judges, competitors, the whole lot. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. So that's the other thing is the community here. Yeah. yeah. Um, I show very few people, like I train on my own mostly, Mm -hmm. And I show very few people what I'm doing mm -hmm. um, because there's a, probably only three that wouldn't criticise me for it. Yeah, and that's a huge factor, isn't it, Sue? You need people that are going to yeah. support you if you're if you're doing something slightly different. Because um, when was when did I? I'm, I think I came to this, to Australia. Um, it's got to be like was it 2012? You came in 2010. 2010. Um, I don't know whether that was your first time. Yeah, it was. I, yeah. Yeah. I. I that was my changeover year to positive. Right. I, right. Up until pretty much then, I was still using a check chain. Really? Wow. Yeah. Wow. How about but yourself? Yeah. Sorry, go on, Sue. I, missed that. I remember you well at that, that <laughs> seminar. I made that cake for you. You did. Yeah, I remember it well. <laughs> Anybody that brings me cake is, uh, is a very, uh, is, it gets into my heart. <laughs> the way to my heart is through cake. Yeah. So yeah, that that was um, my big change over year. Yeah, but and obviously because I oh, well, I have um, obviously travelled back to uh, to Australia and New Zealand periodically, yeah. but the pandemic really really affected that because nobody could travel anywhere. So it yeah. meant that um, you know I, I can still help and access my students and have that continuity. There is several people from um, you know Australia and New Zealand on the group um, that utilise it to again give them that additional feedback that I can't do in person, but this is probably the next best thing. How about yourself, Jan? Um, well, I met you in New Zealand through yep. Sally down in Dunedin, and yep. I brought Rossi the Nutter. Yep. And um, he was, I was blown away with the positivity of the style of training, because I'd only ever known agility training, which is positive anyway, it has to be. Um, so I joined the group to get a lot more technique because there are a couple of trainers, Sally and another in New Zealand, but they're not close. Yeah. Um, so I don't post very much. And that's because I, I realise listening to you, I've got in the mindset of doing other courses where you're only allowed a minute a week. Yeah. And I haven't fully appreciated the benefits of just posting a lot more. And I see other people do. Mm -hmm. And I, I should too. And the other thing is... Um, Sorry, that's a that's a staffy wanting some training. Amazingly, um, the, um, you know, I sit down. Thank you. Um, so I've 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 got into a bad habit with other courses mm -hmm. of posting the best minute mm -hmm. rather than all of the minutes. Yep. And uh, I mean, after listening to you just now and, and thinking about how the others are using this, I'm going to use it a lot more. Yep. Um, I really appreciate how fast your feedback is. I mean, yep. it's just amazing. Mm -hmm. So thank you from all of us, I'm sure. Yep. And um, so I, I watch every video that gets posted. Yep. And I, then I read other comments and I'm learning sort of on the sidelines as well. I'm going to think I'm going to come back and participate a bit more. <laughs> Yeah, but the thing is, Jan, there's no pressure. You can come, that's the no. beauty of being in the group. You can post as regularly as you want. I try to keep on top of the feedback on the odd occasion, if depending on how Facebook works, if it pop, if somebody sometimes posts a video follow up, then I it's sometimes good. But it's very, if there is, it's just a case of tagging me and I, I will pick it up and I try to keep on top of the feedback as um, 
as regularly as possible and, and um, within the day, definitely. Um, so Jamie, Jamie, you're obviously new to um, obedience. How has it helped you then with, if you're, if, um, in, with your training? Yeah, so I've been um, involved with mainly just pet um, dog clubs yep. for probably 15 years, but never anywhere that's really done sort of um, obedience training as well. Um, so I've always dabbled with obedience, but I've mm. never really properly trained a dog for obedience. So I've yep. just always sort of had a play. Yep. Um, so I decided at the beginning of lockdown that I really wanted to up my game. Mm -hmm. And having sort of trained with yourself a few times, different places and different yep. things, um, I saw your VIP group. Yeah. Right. I'm gonna. I've got time now. Yeah. I've got hours at home yep. um let's sign up and really yep. sort of crack on and yep. focus on the, the, the obedience with my new aussie yeah um so i found it really really helpful um Good. i already sort of did a few little bits and pieces yep. uh, that i found on the group but it's opened up a whole new training regime for me Excellent. So many different little bits and pieces that yeah. I never would even think about yeah. training yeah. my dog to do. Yeah, I found on the course, yeah. and it's yeah. it's brought my level of obedience skills from sort of three to to nine in such a short space of time. Excellent. It's been really, really good. Good. Uh, I, 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 that's really great to hear because obviously you've just started on your obedience journey, so to speak. And it's great that obviously you've you found it that it is so helpful and it's been able to uh, upskill you, which was the intention, but you just never know how these things pan out. How about yourself, Trudy, then? You're the grand dam of obedience. You've been in it probably about as long as me. What what was the how do you use it and how do you find it helpful? Okay, first of all, sorry for my language because English is not my first uh, <laughs> native uh, thing. Tom. <laughs> I think I I think uh, I met you, Kamal, when you were more or less the first training day. Was was it your first training day in uh, with Lucy's? Uh, well, one of your first. I one think. of my first. I definitely came to Holland really early in my when I started teaching. So it's yeah. got to be. Um, it was probably about two thousand and five. Mm. Um, when I first started teaching because I think I did a, a, a seminar over here and then you guys asked me to judge and then do yeah just uh, yeah so I, I mean that goes that's going back a few years yeah and we haven't <laughs> aged a day Trudy it has to be said <laughs> no, no I, uh, I think it's very helpful yeah um, and I think it's very inspiring uh I think it's nice to see different levels. And I have to say, as an extra for me, uh, because I'm, well, instruct some, not a, not, a, not as lot as I used to do, but I, I do instruct people too. So I think even if it isn't very helpful for me, it could be helpful for, you know, I won't show the videos, but, you know, I get ideas to help yeah. other people too. Yeah. Uh, so that's nice. And I think... Um, like other people said, it's very inspirational. It's nice to get feedback. Sometimes uh, you think, "Oh fucker," but then you have to, <laughs> well, I do anyway. <laughs> and I have, and I have a, or you know, a nice, you know, I'm in sport for thirty years, so you know, I'm, I'm not. Uh, well, you know, you know, I used to be a uh, groupie from the uh, groupie from okay, several yeah. people. You know, I have, I have a little bit my me. Well, make my mind up a little bit myself. Yep. And after an evening, I think, oh, fucker, he's, he's right after all. <laughs> <laughs> and especially the thing what annoyed me because, you know, it's all about motivation, motivation. And you know, you know me very well. I said, no, no, Tim, you don't send this dog over the top again. Yeah. And I thought, well, you know, but yeah, yeah. So, it's you are annoying, uh, annoying. Uh, well, it's annoying that uh, after <laughs> I, can, I can tell you the honest truth. Yeah. I'm just getting the puppy water. Sorry, guys. Um, I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? It's nice to have people on the group that you have taught in person because yeah. it makes it gives you that additional bit of support, especially those of you that have got young dogs. However, obviously, there's people in the group that you know, um, have 
um, I only been on seminars when I've attended abroad, um, abroad and again, it allows them that continuity and access. So just on a sideline point then, so anybody listening to this conversation, obviously, um, there is people from other, there's people that do IGP, there's people that do agility that are on the VIP groups, but for those of you that do obedience or, or embarking on, what would you say is the biggest misconception about obedience that, that people have? Not, not specifically about online training or anything, but obedience as a sport, um, what would you say is the biggest misconception? I don't mind who wants to start off the um let's try and sell people obedience to people let's make let what is it why do we all um you know um obsess about a two degree move, movement to the left and uh, how we're holding our hand and why do we spend hours discussing a left turn what is it that we do why is it that we're so sad that we do that then whoever wants um, to jump in first i'll start oh, um, on, I'm, I'm late to this sport after doing agility for years Agility friends think it's boring. Right. It's really interesting. And yet I've, I can walk my dogs into an agility ring in heel position and they're working already and they're waiting and I can cross over. And I'm one of the few people in New Zealand that actually can actually do that right. because I'm one of the few people that's doing both sports. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's boring. No, I don't think it's boring. Sorry. That's, yeah. the, that's the message I get. Well, it's not obedience, you know. It's, yeah. Like it's a, a thing that's completely different and people don't understand you can cross over. Yeah. Yeah. How about anybody else? What, what's the biggest misconception about obedience then as a sport? So Dylan, here's a good one. You you obviously came on a um uh, a um what was it a demo, wasn't it? I did. Me, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I came to see you when you um when Punch was twelve weeks old. That's right. Yeah. And I I came because I was having problems with my first dog Amos, mm -hmm. um, being reactive and things like that. Um, and I think what, what I was drawn to was how much the dogs wanted to work. And all of the dogs you got out, you know, so Punch came out in 12 weeks and was paying you attention, was doing stuff, and you were doing shaping and all that sort of stuff. And as opposed to it being sort of telling the dog, dog what to do and ordering it about and this sort of control aspect, there was lots of the dog thinking. And I could see the enjoyment going on with the dog. Um, and any of the dogs who got out of your van came in with it, Spitz, the Boxer, a Collie, yeah. unusual breeds and things like that. So that's why I was brought, drawn to it. I think for me as well, the it's, it's something I can do in London and in the city, whereas other sports I've done, working trials and things require more land and things. So it's something accessible and doable at home and things like that. Um, misconceptions about it i think it gets sort of labeled as something very um authoritarian and things like that and well, miss the the fact that the dogs can have fun and are enjoying it and the ones who are doing it really well are loving it you know and i think that's that's the thing that i try and get with my dogs you know or have been trying to yeah you know. yeah yeah how about anybody else on input what's the misconception about obedience yeah, yeah people oh sorry Oh. Go on, Trudy. That people at my work think my dogs are very obedient in general life. <laughs> <laughs> and I can guarantee I you like that. I like that misconception, Trudy. I like that misconception. <laughs> Good one. So, but Trudy, obviously you've been doing obedience for a long while. What What is it that appeals to you? Because obviously, you know, you've played around with other sports as well. And you, you've... You know, you've dabbled in a bit of agility and you've, you know, what is it that makes you go, I want to get a puppy and I want to do obedience again with this, with this dog? What is it that draws you to it then? Uh, I, I think because there's so much in it. Mm -hmm. uh, there is, even after 30 years, I, well, if I go to a seminar of you, I think, oh, Jesus, why did I, did I, you know, there's so much detail, I think. Mm -hmm. And, and and one one way I love it, but you know, like with with seal, I think well, you know, I know where my strengths are as a trainer, and my strengths is motivation, attention, uh, get all the things more or less. But I'm now you know ready for the last five percent, and that's um, that's a I know a hurdle for me. I think oh god, all that 
all those tiny, you know, like little detail things. Yep. Um, I like it, but I hate it too. But yeah. that, that, uh, that's uh, that's the challenge for me. I think yeah, I absolutely. myself yep. every time and my dog. But so yeah, I think uh, and and what you say, it's quite sad that you can. Uh, well, after a training day or, you know, training with your dog, you think, oh, God, that, that last 5% of the left turns, why yeah. that, you yeah. know, that's really, I think it's in an intelligent sport. Yeah. And the, the thing, what I like before, obedience and agility, in obedience, if you do, you know, like a turn, well, a 10% out of balance yeah. or something, well, you're still in the game. Yeah. But in ability, if you if you move your left uh, eyebrow, uh, well, you're disqualified then. So that that was not so or you, nice. Or you could have an off course, yeah, or knock a pole, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So how, yeah. How about yourself, Sue? How how about what makes you do obedience then? Um. Well, my history really. I I used to train callers <clears throat> method. Um, right. And I had Rottweilers, and I was very good at Collar's method. Mm -hmm. But then I got a border collie by accident <laughs> and tried to do Collar's method. <laughs> Poor bugger. Anyway, um, I went to a trial because I hadn't trialed for quite some time when mm -hmm. I had the border collie. I think it was about 15 years. And when I got there, the standard had gone downhill so badly. It was just really? unbelievable. But Steve Davies was there. Yep. And so I saw one dog that could heal. Yeah. And I thought my dog was ready. And I looked at his dog and I thought, no, nah. I want to do that. Yeah. Anyway, I bugged the hell out of him for months and months and months before he'd lower himself to look at me. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he finally tried to teach me a few things but it was pretty hopeless and then because I didn't understand and yeah. it's an entire mind change it's not just the physical things it it's a total like if you it's the opposite end of the scale yeah you know and the two are incompatible you can't do half of one and half of the other yeah um so he taught me some stuff and then I found online things and got in with Susie and Alison and yep. Bob and Steve and yep. learned a fair bit from them. And, you know, I had a few lessons from Susie, but I think basically it was the comparison that I saw at the trial. Mm -hmm. The dogs that are trained this way are very rare here, mm -hmm. but they are outstanding, mm -hmm. you know, to me anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think, judge. you know what, I think that's a very common experience. I know certainly my experience was it was one person at Dog Club that inspired me to want to do obedience. So yeah. um, I went like a bit like you, Sue. Um, I went to Dog Club and I we did square bashing. So we walked around for the first time, you know, the first, second might have been the second night. Um, there I was about nine years old, 10 years old with this little chow chow cross water collie on a check chain and just walked around the hall all night really with a check chain and on a, it was a slippery floor it was just you know horrific but you know funny enough I still fell in love with dog training and then what happened was after we finished our class then you'd have the people that were more obedience focused and I, somebody came in with a, a lady called Joan um she used to have a massive beehive um, beehive haircut which she always had and she had this German shepherd called Samba and she did distance control with him by putting him at the one end of the hall on the stage and she went to the other and she did. And I just thought I was absolutely blown away by the fact that she could, I mean, I couldn't even get my dog to sit. And there she was doing six, well, it might have been even more position changes. And I was absolutely, and that was the moment where I went, oh my gosh, wow. And then she had these absolutely nutter, super keen um, border collies. Um, and um, she let me have a go at them, uh, work them. And that was it. I was just hooked in a minute because I was like, this thing was just glued to my leg and it was super responsive and it was doing the things which for me at that point, it was alien to me to grasp the concept of the dog doing anything that I was told it to do, let alone, you know, walk by my side and down and sit. And it was just that instantaneous, you know, love affair from that moment. Um, how about you, uh, Rose? And um, Rose has been, obviously you've been training dogs a little while and Lou, you guys, what makes you keep on doing obedience then? What keeps you enthralled after all these years? Rose? 
I like interacting with my dog and having fun. And yeah, I'm not particularly good at it, but if we can go out and play with each other, do something, and then you suddenly, like you were talking to me yesterday because I'd made a complete pig's ear of the down. Mm -hmm. So this afternoon I've been going there and she's going, yeah, if you'd done it that way in the first place, mum, yeah, I yeah. could be doing it. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Yes, we've done yeah. that. And it, it's fun. I mean, I, I ate my way to a dog when I was seven years old <laughs> because they couldn't get, I didn't eat as a child. Right. And they promised me a dog when I could get to a certain certain weight. Oh, so really? I ate my way to a dog who I got <laughs> for my seventh birthday. Right. And it was the kind of interaction I had with that that dog. Mm. And then I didn't have a dog for a very long time. But um, it, it's the interaction of the fact we could. It's so much more fun now. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. not the let's well your dog's got to do it because yeah. it's obedient. Yeah. Um, we can go out. I go. Do you want to do this? And I've got a dog going, yeah, okay. Yeah. What would yeah. you like me to do? Yeah. And yeah. that's fun. Yeah. I think definitely for, you know, I think certainly for pet dog training, there was definitely, when I first started, there was definitely an, um, uh, a lot of aversive compulsive training. In sports training, when I first joined, there was definitely the concept of using play as a medium to teach so we were very motivational we used toys not food not so much but definitely toys and then obviously as the as dog training has evolved there's been more influence from science and and you know marine mammal training and clicker training has become very prevalent in all spheres of dog training and that certainly in obedience has meant that i think that the advantage of clicker training is that it's allowed a lot more non-conventional breeds of dogs to succeed so you can see dogs that previously would have been deemed stubborn or untrainable or um difficult oh you have a little tantrum oh that's my puppy is now at the moment um oh, have a little paddy there you go um uh, dogs that were deemed untrainable because they didn't conform to a methodology and that have actually been able to flourish which for me is fantastic because it means then you don't have to have a border collie or um, a golden retriever or a purpose-bred dog you can do it with like a border terrier or a schnauzer or a beagle or a, a lasso apso or a, a um, you know I think that's what I really love about beans and they can you know all have a, they can all partake how about you Luby Lou? After your especially your background in horses, what how, what makes you keep me coming back to obedience? Oh, you're you're on mute, Luby. I think I'm a bit of a weirdo. That's what makes me come <laughs> back. <laughs> uh, no, I'm quite competitive. Well, I'm very competitive. Uh, but, oh. um, but also a little bit the same as you. I was at like um, pet dog club with my with my puppy when I was uh, very little. Uh, and somebody came with a uh, a dog that actually uh, got made up into an obedience champion, but it had just won its first ticket, and so they were going to Crufts, and so they were just oh, wow. coming. They were coming to do some, like you know, different halls, that kind of thing, just Who stuff around people. And so they did like this little bit of a demo, wow. and then they let me do heel work with their dog, and that was it. Uh, there Who was, was that. Um, I can't remember what she was called, but the dog was called Altricia Blue Perry. Oh, yeah. Um, Alison Corkill. Don't know. I yeah. can't remember what she was called, but the dog's yeah. name has always stayed with me. Yeah. Perry. Yeah. Um, and so, um, and the, yeah, so then I was a little bit hooked and then I did all the uh, YKC as it was, oh, KCJO as it was. KCJO, yeah. Uh, stuff. And then I, uh, and I was also very into horses and um, and the dressage side of that is mm -hmm. uh, is what I really liked in the in the event in more than more than the other the other bits. And yeah. so, um, yeah, I, I like I quite like the precision. I'm not saying I'm very good at it, but um, but I like the precision. I like the movement aspects of it. Mm -hmm. I'm not like, you know, I've played a little bit and my um Brock did agility with my housemate, but the like fast and furious stuff isn't really my cup of tea at all. But I, I like a, a bit more. Uh, I, I can totally appreciate that it's brilliant, and when it's taught well, it's just fantastic to watch mm -hmm. and the responsiveness. But I like. Uh, yeah i just like working I, with the, for me do you know what it, the big appeal of obedience is it's a juxtaposition between two absolute opposites 
So ultimately, we want our dogs to work with loads of enthusiasm and drive, but then they have to perform these behaviours and have really nail exact criteria, like, you know, their left toe has to be in a certain position, their head has to be in a certain position, they have to have duration, they have to do it under distractions, they have to do it um, in, a, in, a, in a certain rhythm. And it's those bits that really appeal to me that um, the conflict, and obviously I do a lot of other sports as well, which is uh, from a dog training point of view, I like the diversity of training different things. But my heart has always remained in obedience because, um, because of that entity. And obviously it's my initial foundation. Um, so how about um, for anybody contemplating them? So anybody out there that's watching um, that or partaking, what would you say um to them to sell obedience then so anybody about what would why would they why why do obedience because obedience for me sometimes gets a really bad rap um in that it um it's seen as you know the serious official sport and um it's often you know perceived as we're very po-faced and serious um and, and what would why would anybody want to have a go at it then what's what's give me some pros of obedience anybody jump in I think, I think somebody touched on what I would say first is the increased uh, relationship with your dog. Yeah. You know, if you can train your dog to do some of the stuff you end up doing in obedience, then your understanding of training and what your dog understands of what you want of it and things like that. I mean, the, the increased uh, relationship with it is, is the main thing for me. You know, I love training my dog um, more so than competing and things like that. It's the sort of training side of it that I get out of it. So that's the main thing for me. Definitely. Yeah. Anybody else? What's the, what's the, why would anybody want to do obedience? What it has? Um, I Go chose on. to do obedience because I love the precision, but I, I also love the way a dog can be so happy. It takes other people by surprise. Mm -hmm. So my Rosie has competed and she walks around with her tail going 19 to the dozen because yeah. she's so happy to be on my leg with yeah. her mum, just yeah. me and her, like that's yeah. the world. Yeah. And it's just an amazing feeling. It's, it is about relationship. I mean, to be honest, the reason I started it with Rossi is because in the early days, there's no equipment involved. Yep. And Rossi is so high drive, that agility was sending him nuts. Right. He needs to work. Mm -hmm. And also he's very happy being physically close to me. Right. And so it's his happy place as well. Yeah. And he's just, he's actually, better than Rosie right it's just he's a bit less reliable <laughs> right. yeah 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 anybody else what's the, why why get into obedience what is what why would anybody want to do obedience yeah I have to say I like the social side too yeah you know like uh, spending a day with friends uh, and some friends I know for 30 years or longer yep. And you can talk about your dog without... Uh, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> yeah. you can talk about a left turn and nobody thinks you're weird. <laughs> no, so I, I like that part too. I'm, I'm, I think I'm a bit competitive, but not sad if I don't go home with a rosette. Yeah. If, if, if a rosette, I'm happy for five minutes and, that, and then I uh, think, well, you know, rosette is, isn't, uh, well, the end of the world too, I have to say. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I like, I have to say, I like the social side yeah. of it and other dog sports too, I think. But yeah. um, no, I, I like it and I like, well, but like Dylan said, the relationship with your dog and, yeah. and, and the, the zillion ways to get to a certain point. I like, I think it's quite, a, well, the, there are some natural trainers, but I think that the, the uh, many possibilities and the thing it's just a very clever sport i like that yeah yeah i think you know what really has always appealed to me and i think con people probably be surprised this i actually like the diversity um no problem jan thank you for joining us joanne no problem thank you i love the diversity i love that there is so many variations of obedience in um you know there is you know, there is the way in which I choose to do obedience. There's other people's opinions. I like the fact that it's not just one size fits all. I think that they, um, it, I love the fact that it's diverse. I love the fact that people, there are different, I love the, the differences in the tests. Um, it's not just, you know, an IGP, for example, it's always the same test. Um, I like the fact that you can have, you know, a, a judge can put up one test one week and then it can be polar opposite the next. So I think that from a training point of view, it really, 
um, means you have to have a broad skill set because you have to train a lot of variation. You have to train different heel work patterns. You have to train different send aways, different retrieve articles, which for me is what makes it so interesting. Um, you know, all sports have their pros and cons. Agility has their pros and cons. Obedience, uh, sorry, IGP has it. Working fast has its pros and cons. For me, the selling point of obedience is it's accessible. I think it's uh, it generally is a so there's quite a social aspect to it in that you always get in comparison to say for example working trials which can be solitary. Um, you know, you in a field with your dog, which again there's an appeal to that, especially if you have a dog that you know might have confidence or um, temperament issues. Just you and the dog is great. If you're a person that likes to be social, then <coughs> um, and and be around other uh, people in that setting, obedience is definitely great. It's very accessible. There's quite a lot of obedience. Um, shows up and down the country so um, you probably find there's one within probably you know half an hour 40 minutes an hour of you um, I would say that's a massive massive plus for a lot of people um, and I think in years gone by we used to have a lot more dog training clubs that taught obedience and I think that's definitely changed and evolved but you'll probably find that there's a lot of um, more accessibility of um, obedience and definitely for me it's the thing that it's the engagement and the relationship which for me, all dog training should have that as the foundation, but I think specifically for obedience, you have to really work hard at those entities. Motivation as Trudy has talked about because in, in, the sport is a lot of the exercise and a lot of the behaviors aren't naturally reinforcing for the dog. So for example, you know, um, uh, say tracking is quite self-reinforcing, running for a lot of breeds of dogs is very reinforcing. So agility can be very motivational. There is a real skill set for taking something that the dog probably naturally wouldn't find um, appealing per se and making it uh, an extension of your relationship by explaining it to the dog in a way that the dog goes, oh, actually, this is a really, really great game. Um, and I'd say that to me is the real, uh, you know, the, the challenge and the art, which I, I find so appealing. Um, so I don't know if anybody watching has any questions before we let these good people go um, about... Uh, let's just have a look at some of the cards. So Geraldine's, for me, it's the level of communication and relationship required transforms dogs' ownership. Yep. Uh, and the challenge of the skill. Totally agree, Geraldine, in that it is, um, there's so many entities compared competitive obedience, uh, that communication, you know, that real, almost like they can read your thoughts, which was the thing that initially drew me to competitive obedience. Um, and uh, definitely the challenges of all the variation, all the skills. Um, relationship, again, creating a partnership, second to none. Absolutely. Anybody else got any comments about why they, they how, what is the appeal of obedience, I should say? Um, somebody said, oh, Kamal, you should get a Kelpie. I do love Kelpies, I have to say. Um, so maybe one day. Uh, I think I've got enough on my plate at the moment. But do you find, um, Tara asked, I don't know if you're taking questions, but do you find it works well with your workshops too? I'm, in pos I'm interested in possibly joining in the new year if you have space. Yes, absolutely, um, Tara. So Generally, I open up um, the IP access um, two times a year. So it's, and the reason that I'm doing this um, series of lives is because I'm actually expanding the course. So up until now, the course has only been for heel work and foundation training, but I'm actually adding to it. I'm adding a load more content to it. So this week, obviously, is just letting you guys have a little bit of an insight into it. Um, I'm going to show, share my screen and show you what it looks like. Um, of the VIP group looks like. And next week, if all goes to plan, I'm going to try and do a live class on next Thursday. So anybody watching, it will be on Zoom, can join in. I'm going to try and do all you need is your dog, some space, some treats or toys. And we're going to, I'm going to try and do a live class. So hopefully technology will be with me. I have done loads of live classes before via Zoom, um, but depending on how many people we have, it might be on a grander scale. And I'm gonna go over some really simple behaviors and, and skills. So and that's gonna be open to anybody who wants to join. So provisionally at the moment, it's gonna be next Thursday at 7 p.m. That's the plan. So put that in your diary if you're interested in attending. So before we wrap up and before we, um, I'll see if there's any more questions, I'm gonna share my screen and show you guys hopefully, what the VIP group looks like, okay? Let me just make it onto Facebook on this. I'm hoping this will work. Okay. Uh, so if I go here, right. Let me share my screen. Okay, here we go. 
So, oh, I get off you. Right, you know what? Okay, so this is um, the VIP heel work group, and this is all going to um, be added um, and changed around um, because it's actually going to be amalgamated into one group. And as you can see, obviously, there's messages about tonight's call, but you can see, for example, here, Lou has posted a video, um, which again is seven minutes long. There is no um, there's no uh, limitation on how long your video can be. Um, and Lou's posted her video and then I've put some comments underneath. You can see obviously other people, Sue, for example, there has put one of her dog and which again, same thing. I've given her feedback um, and so forth and so forth. So that's the VIP group and that's how most people, they post content and I can um, uh, give them an insight. So I'm gonna give you guys a little nosy. Let me stop squaring my screen, okay? So if I stop sharing and I'm going to actually I'm going to show you what the website looks like let me have a look and okay and you can have a look at some of the nosy around the content so bear with me whilst I log in okay okay so I'm going to share my screen again and show you the, okay, so this is the online course and obviously the various courses that I've got on, uh, and the, the subjects covered. Um, the related reactivity one was obviously specifically for reactive dogs, but some of the people in my various groups um, actually belong to that. Um, and this I'm going to go into, let me find it, the heel work course. So if I expand on that, okay, we'll click on that. And then you can see a whole load of lessons. Um, so if I open pre-skills for heel work, okay, a whole load of lessons and lectures um, and content and information about um, heel work training specifically, because that's obviously what this entity relates to. Um, and then I've got obviously information about footwork, um, prep work for body awareness for heel work, how to teach the core skills, all the various entities and so forth and so forth. So you can use that if you're, um, once you subscribe to the course, you can put con uh, um, videos up of any of those lessons covered and ask questions about your, your, your struggles or what you're dealing with, et cetera, et cetera. Um, again, there's a section on small dogs. If you've got a small dog, um, all the various skills needed to teach competition heel work. The addition to the course, if I stop square sharing, is stop sharing. The additional exercises are then covered in the course. So um, all the other exercises that an obedience dog um, needs is going to be covered in the course. And I'm my um, as part of the new online group, uh, the Facebook group, you will also be able to, I'm going to aim to do a class on a regular basis for everybody on the various content. Um, when the VIP group, I also do webinars and lectures, and I've got some special guests um, that I've got planned in the new group that I'm going to have done on various topics relating to um, obedience and the foundation skills. All right, so loads of stuff planned there. Um, so unless anybody has any other questions, I'm just going to check my phone. Uh, let's have a look. Ooh, working task from the first part. How do you help you? Yeah, absolutely. Everybody, I think, you know, working trials is a great sport. Funny enough, I was tracking today. I love trials training. I love the diversity of it. Um, and I think obedience creates a really great foundation for all dog sports. So, you know, if you look at um, Denise Fenzi, Susan Garrett, um, Janice Gunn, um, Terry Arnold in the States, all of those people have a, an obedience background and really, really successful dog trainers um, that have dabbled in obedience. And certainly it's... Um, played a massive part in their foundation. If you watch a lot of the stuff, say for example, um, um, Denise and Susan do, there's, you can absolutely see their obedience background um, in how they teach and the skills that they teach. So let me see if there's any questions. Oh, don't move the camera out of the way. All right, all. Well, so uh, let, let us show uh, the puppy face again, please. Oh, hang on, I've got to get back, hang on a second. He's eating something. Probably he shouldn't know. He's got his con in his mouth. Hang on a second, Trudy. <laughs> I'll finish up with a cute puppy. That's always a good end. Yeah. <laughs> there he is. Come on. He's contemplating. Come on. Come on. <laughs> he doesn't have a recourse yet. Well, he does, but I don't want to test it. Come on. <laughs> he's, he's contemplating coming. Let me grab you. Come here. Right. 
<sighs> what a better way to face finish. Oh. oh, hang on. There we go. Oh, and Sugar's like a goat crashing. She's photobombing us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, all. Thank you very much to my VIPs for joining and giving your insight into the group and how you use it for people to um, get an understanding. Or certainly for those of you that are on the other side of the pond, I really do appreciate you joining. Thank you very much. It is, I have to say it's a fantastic community of people. Everybody is really genuinely super supportive. Um, you always... It's a real positive energy within the group. Everybody's really uplifting, which um, has been oh, it's been created. But also, you know, they all take up the um, mantle themselves to lift others up. When you know, some and, and it, I'd say also it, it's a safe community where they can share their struggles. When sometimes people have got a little bit exasperated, they can share that. You know, I'm getting frustrated on this particular skill and you'll have, you know, easily half a dozen people, if not more, that are going to say, no, you're right. And, you know, uplift you, which, as Sue explained, is a massive um, part of dog training as a journey. All right. OK, all. Thank you very much for joining. Hopefully it's been interesting listening to meeting my VIPs. Sugar's determined to get on camera. Bless her. OK, <laughs> that's it. Get the cute, the cute appeal. Um, I should love you guys and leave you guys. So pencil in your diary next Thursday. <laughs> Something's been broken. Better go and rescue the puppy. Um, pencil in your diary next week, all of you watching as well. 7 p.m. next Thursday, the 11th. I'm going to attempt to do a live class, okay? And everybody's welcome. All right, all. I love you guys and leave you guys. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.